that it's estimated that an agricultural world in which most human beings are peasants should be able to support five to seven billion people. Well, folks, we have six billion people right now. That means all of us in this room, or nearly all of us in this room, are going to have to become agrarian peasants if we use this solution. In contrast, they go on to say, a reasonable estimate for an industrialized world society at the present North American material standard of living would be one billion people. So if we wanted to maintain our current standard of living, we would have to reduce the Earth's human population by somewhere around 70%. In 1970, just three years after the publication of the Iron Mountain Report, which calls for if we're going to create a world government, we can no longer use war as a mechanism to cause fear amongst populations and therefore allow us to control the behavior of populations through fear. And they settled on, in 1967, in their publication called the Iron Mountain Report, the Environmental Holocaust. In 1970, three years after that publication, the Foreign Relations began to publish a series of articles describing the ecological holocaust that was facing the world. And in this particular issue, the first issue done by George Keenan to prevent a world disaster, where it was summed up in three points that the eco-crisis is, is a global threat so great that it endangers all of life on Earth. If you look at the 10 hottest years ever measured, They've all occurred in the last 14 years, and the hottest of all was 2005. We are causing global warming. This is really not a political issue so much as a moral issue. The temperature increases are taking place all over the world, and that's causing stronger storms. Is it possible that we should prepare against other threats besides terrorists? The Arctic is experiencing faster melting. If this were to go, sea level worldwide would go up 20 feet. This is what would happen in Florida. Around Shanghai, home to 40 million people. The area around Calcutta, 60 million. Here's Manhattan. The World Trade Center Memorial would be underwater. Think of the impact of a couple hundred thousand refugees, and then imagine a hundred million. Those who deny global warming are just flat out wrong. Ellen Goodman from the Boston Globe wrote, let's just say that global warming deniers are now on par with Holocaust deniers. Scientists silenced for questioning the threat of global warming. I know that I've had several friends who have essentially been told that you, if you speak out as climate, on climate change, you must do so as an independent citizen. If you do so through our organization or through our institution, you will essentially be fired. Once you realize how many holes there are in the consensus solution, you may begin to open up your mind to the other side of the global warming debate as a whole. The only consensus I'm aware of is that it's warm in the last century. They, they, they completely ignore the fact that there's this thing called the Oregon Petition that was signed by 19,000 professionals and scientists who don't agree with the idea that we are causing climate change. I can't tell you how many calls I've received from parents saying their kids are now being shown an inconvenient truth completely unchallenged, not just in science class, but in art and math classes. I have to speak out and say that the science we, are, we have is still incomplete, and the science we're being told by the IPCC is really incorrect science. Global warming paradoxically causes not only more flooding, but also more drought big hurricanes, tornadoes, fearsome diseases, polio, tuberculosis, West Nile virus, avian flu, SARS, polar bears that have actually drowned, mosquitoes, caterpillars, communism, it's slavery, global warming, global warming, global warming. Uh, Aurelia Pecci, who actually created the Club of Rome and is the inner inner circle of the global elitists in 1991 stated, that while searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, and the like would fit the bill. All of these dangers are caused by human intervention. The real enemy then is humanity itself. Put this to you bluntly. Global warming is a complete fallacy. 
Al Gore received the Grammy and the Nobel Peace Prize for a film that is filled with holes and mistruths. Ice cores taken 2,000 meters below the surface have enabled us to look at the last 160,000 years. We believe that in Greenland, the medieval warm period was about one and a half degrees warmer on average than, than today. And they also show consistently warmer temperatures thousands of years ago before man-made greenhouse gases existed. Approach our time, we can see that in the period between 4,000 years ago and back to the period 2,000 years ago, which is actually the Roman age, the temperatures have been decreasing in Greenland by two and a half degrees. Al Gore is made out to be a revolutionary figure attempting to save the planet, which is quite true. He just doesn't mention the fact that saving the earth doesn't involve you. According to his agenda, it will result in massive land repossession and extreme limitations on food and water and fossil fuels for the public. And please note that Al Gore is a sustainable developer. The global warming lie is very popular today because it receives major media coverage and has an attractively titled goal of saving the planet. But how does this tie in with Agenda 21? The result of the 1992 Earth Summit Conference in Rio de Janeiro was the Kyoto Treaty. The Kyoto Treaty states that every country must drastically reduce the use of fossil fuels by mandate of the United Nations. Concentrations of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere are at their highest levels in more than 200,000 years. If the trend does not change, scientists expect the seas to rise two feet or more over the next century. Island chains such as the Maldives will disappear from the map unless we reverse the predictions. Thank you very much. And as of June 2007, 172 nations and other government entities have ratified the treaty. And if you were wondering how this ties into putting the Earth's priority above human survival in accordance with pagan beliefs, every country's deadline for the implementation of Agenda 21 and the Kyoto Treaty is in 2012. And if this wasn't enough, when the Pentagon was damaged in 9-11, they set a goal to have a completely new and improved Pentagon in December of 2012. So Codex Alimentarius goes into effect at the end of 2009, which gives it three years for the Codex regulations on food to create billions of preventable diseases and deaths. When citizens of every nation are dying of starvation and diseases and fear for their lives because of global warming and major catastrophes, they will do what the public has been proven to do in times of great peril. They will beg for their government to step in and do something. How are they going to get you to join the new economy? They're going to say, we have a solution. You see, one of the tricks of the Illuminati is they create a problem and then they provide the solution when you beg them to. And pray tell, what will the United Nations suggest when there's a global problem? They will demand a global government, a new world order. Exactly as the Maya, Hopi, Kali Yuga, and many other pagan civilizations prophesized. By 2012, the Kyoto Treaty, Agenda 21, Codex Alimentarius, and the new Pentagon will be fully operational to enforce a new world order. And the new world religion is obvious. We will all worship the Earth, Gaia, the mother goddess we saved from extinction from global warming. We will be told that to keep from repeating the mistakes that we made in the past, we must hold the Earth in higher regard than humans, just as pagan traditions require. This is too obvious to ignore. It is right in front of our faces and yet we still refuse to see it. I guarantee you that by 2012 there will be a World War III, but it will not be between nations. It will be us and them. They know this. Why do you think the UN is consistently trying to disarm the public and the nations? They don't want us to be capable of fighting back. The proof of this is in the film released by the UN called Armed to the Teeth, 
where it demonizes gun ownership. It is also shown in the freedom from war policy put in place by JFK in 1961. President John Kennedy went to the United Nations, September 1961, and he presented the United States Program for General and Complete Disarmament in a Peaceful World uh, during a speech, and he said, this is the official program of the United States of America. It's a disarmament program. It calls for the United States to turn over its military to the United Nations. Uh, let that sit for a second. It calls...